Welcome back to Morgan Mead Makes. Today we're going to start a new tutorial series called Photoshop in 7 Days. This series is basically geared toward the people who have never opened Photoshop or maybe you've opened it and got lost and just need some guided structure. The way I want you to approach this is watch a 10 minute episode today, practice for about 45 minutes, and then let it go. Go to bed, eat a good meal, um, you know, just kind of like put it in the back of your mind. I don't want you to burn through all seven episodes all in one sitting because it might be just too much for your brain to absorb. And more in-depth tutorials will be coming later. For now, let's learn the basics. Okay, so let's jump right in. First thing that we're gonna do is create a new document. Can't draw without one of those, so hit create new. And this is where we get to pick basically the size of our document that we're going to draw on. Um, there's a bunch of presets that we can access across the top here. Whether we're doing a film or video project, designing something for mobile, uh, doing something for print, or uh, if we just want to put in something custom, which is what I want to do right now because we're not too worried about the end product here. So. I'm actually going to change this to pixels and our resolution if we're just going to save things to the screen or put things on the web we're going to put this at 72 pixels per inch and the width I'm just going to go ahead and make this 1200 by eh, 1000 almost square we're going to keep it at RGB and 8-bit white all this stuff I'm not going to concern you with the details yet because uh, this is just a beginner course. So we're just going to hit create. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with the first two tools that you should be learning in Photoshop, and that is the pencil and the brush. They can both be accessed on the toolbar over here on the left hand side. Um, you'll see a little paintbrush about a third of the way down. And that's what we want to click. If we hold it in, you'll see other options. We've got the brush tool, pencil tool, color replacement tool, and mixer brush tool. We're going to be looking at the brush tool and pencil tool. So let's take a look at the brush first. And we can see our cursor right here. It shows the brush size. I can make it bigger or smaller with the little square brackets located next to your enter key on the keyboard. So if I hold in the right brackets, the right square brackets, then I can make a bigger brush and left square brackets will make a smaller brush. Let's just take a look at our default brush stroke. Okay, it's all right, it's, it's, it's something, it's something. If I go up here at the top, this little toolbar at the top of the window is a dynamic toolbar, meaning uh, if you look closely, if I select a different tool, the options up at the top change. So it is dependent on what tool you have selected. If I have the brush selected, I've got options for the size and shape of the brush and the opacity flow and smoothing for the brush. Let's look at the sizing first. We know that we can change it with the keyboard, but we also have this little slider right here. You can see it change, whoop, get bigger. I'm gonna leave it somewhere in the middle right now. And the hardness, this is what controls the edge of the brush. So right now it's cranked up to 100, meaning we have a very hard edged brush. If I lower it all the way down to zero, or type in a zero right there, um, then when I draw, you can see a huge difference in the outline of our brush. A lot of times, uh, when I'm retouching photos and stuff, I'll have this up around 80. So you can see it's a fairly hard edge, but there's just a teeny little bit of smoothing going on right there. Um, it's not so hard that you'll see uh, artifacts from the sharpness of it. Okay, so one other thing that I'd like to show you is you can actually control the shape of your brush and the angle of the brush in this little preview box right here. So let's revert this back to normal. I'm going to pull that all the way out, change the angle back, 
And uh, one other thing that I want to show you is the opacity. We can change the opacity of our brush right there. And the cool thing about that is it actually layers upon itself. So you can um, achieve darker strokes just by layering them up. And smoothing. If I crank this up, I won't get these jaggedy edges like I did on the first stroke. It'll smooth it out quite a bit. That's halfway. I'm going to crank it all the way up and try drawing. That's pretty good for as bad as this mouse is behaving currently. There we go. You can see how smooth that is. So if you've got a shaky hand or a really bad mouse, crank up the smoothing. I'm going to turn that back down and let's do a new document. And I'm going to show you the pencil tool. Now, like I said, any of the tools on the toolbar over here, if they have a little arrow in the bottom right corner, that means there's more tools tucked in there. You just have to hold the mouse button down and then you can access other tools. The keyboard shortcut is li listed off to the right side. So B would get me the brush tool. And notice if I hit B again, it doesn't do anything, right? Well, if I hold in shift and hit B, now I can access the next tool on the, on the tool submenu there. So um, I now have my pencil selected. Let's get a bigger size like we did before. There we go. And you can see that it looks a little bit, I don't know, I don't want to say crappier, but the edges look worse than this brush tool. It's a little more jaggedy. It's almost like the difference between like an inkjet printer and the old dot matrix printer. Well, let's see what the real difference here between the pencil and the brush are. So what I'm gonna do is create a new document that is super tiny, all right? We're gonna go 24 by 24 pixels. This is a really tiny image and we're gonna zoom in. We can either use this little zoom tool at the bottom of the toolbar and click a few times, or I can, with any other tool selected, I can hit Control and Plus on the keyboard. I'll let you guess what Control minus does. If I do Control zero, that will zoom in all the way and center it. Now I've got the pencil tool selected and I've decreased the size of the pencil all the way down to one pixel. So uh, theoretically, if I stamp this 24 times edge to edge, that'll be the, the width of the document. So I'm just gonna stamp it right here. Boop. And you see that it makes a perfect little square. Now I can do um, pixel art like this. You know, you guys have all seen the pixel art or, you know, like a Mario or whatever. This is how they made it. Just a tiny, tiny image with a pencil tool and drew the pictures. I'll make a little guy waving. Hey! Put some feet on him. You know, it's a cute little pixel dude. This is really hard to do with a mouse, by the way. Okay, so there's my little pixel guy. Okay, I'm gonna get the brush tool now, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put the brush size all the way down to one, and I'll even turn the hardness all the way up. Now, one thing that you might notice right away is that the cursor is round instead of square like it was with the pencil. So I'm gonna try drawing the same little guy and you guys can already see what the big difference is. I gotta click a few times, first of all. And the brush just isn't that great. Even with the hardness all the way up, it's not that great at doing pixel art. Now if I zoom all the way out, um, you know, that's what the difference is. So the pencil is a square cursor it's hardness is all the way up and you're gonna get nice crisp edges even down to the pixel level. The brush on the other hand, even if you zoom in all the way to the individual pixels, this is our brush document here. 
you will see that the edges still have a bit of blurring, fuzzing, blending, however you want to say it. Um, they do bleed a little bit into uh, the background. So those are the two biggest difference between brush tool and pencil tool. Let's get one more new document and let's actually draw something. Okay, so with my brush, I'm going to make the brush size a little bit bigger here. And, uh, well, I'll make it all the way big. Let's just make something really, 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 really simple. I'm gonna pick my colors up here. I can also pick them down here at the bottom of the toolbar. Right now we're only gonna concern ourselves with the upper left color, which is the foreground color. The other one is the background color. We'll get to that in a different tutorial. So instead of drawing, I'm just gonna stamp. If I wanted to give this a black outline, like if I wanna do something cartoony, uh, instead of stamping right there, what I could do is pick black and stamp, and I'll hold the cursor right over it like this and decrease, decrease the brush size a little bit now. I was at 600 before, so let's type in something like uh, 580. And I'm gonna pick red, and I'm gonna go right here in the middle and stamp again. Now I've got like a nice little tune outline. Uh, it's pretty cool. Now what if I wanted to do a stripe across the middle, like a, like a Pokeball, okay? I want to click this little icon right here to reset that to black and white. And it's gonna be really hard for me to draw that little stripe across the middle. Now, I, if I had a lot of forethought with this, what I could do is maybe increase the brush size and kind of stamp it like this. And then, you know, stamp another red one like this and then erase all the other stuff. I don't know, like it, it looks like it would be a really complicated way to, um, you know, get something that seems kind of simple. Well, this is where the magic of Photoshop's layers come in. I'm gonna take white and I'm just gonna draw right over this, okay? By the way, we do have an eraser tool. It's uh, three tools down from the brush. We have an eraser right there. It simply erases and puts the background color in where you erased. So my background color is white, so it's gonna erase into white. Um, let's take a look at layers. So over here on the right hand side is a layers panel. Right now I only have a background layer, but if I go all the way to the bottom, hit that plus button. Now I've got a transparent layer. That's what the, the gray and white checkers mean. It's transparent, it's like a sheet of glass stacked on top of a piece of paper. So right now I can draw on that piece of glass. Why would I wanna do that? Why you ask? Here's why, I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna take our black outline one more time, stamp it down just by clicking once. And what I'll do is create a new layer, go to red. I'm gonna change this. We're in the 800s now, so I'll go 780. I'm gonna stamp it right in the middle, boop, 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 like that. And now um, we can do some tricky stuff with the little stripe across the, the middle there. Let's create one more layer. So I hit that little plus sign right there. Let's get our black color one more time. Increase the brush size until it looks like it might make a little belt across the middle. And I just zoomed out just a hair. So I'm gonna punch it right there. And let's go ahead and grab that eraser tool now. Make that large and in charge. And we'll put it up just kind of right there. Okay, so now we have a cool, clean stripe across the middle, except it kind of hangs over the edges. Check this out. If I go back to this layer one, which is where I want to cut off that belt, um, and I hover over the thumbnail image of that layer, and I hold in control on the keyboard, if I click, it's going to make a selection around the pixels that are in that layer. All the pixels in the whole layer, it's gonna select them. And what you can do with a selection is, um, here, I'll get, a, I'll get a blue color and I'll show you what a selection does. 
A selection means I can't touch anything outside of that selection. So I'll shrink it down a little bit. If I start scribbling, notice, no matter where my mouse goes, I can only scribble inside of that selection. So we're gonna use this to our advantage and we're gonna invert that selection, meaning instead of selecting the ball on the inside, we're gonna select everything but the ball. So we're gonna go up to the select menu and we're gonna choose inverse. So now everything but that ball in the middle is selected. We're gonna go back to our little belt layer by clicking on it once. Make sure, and, and I'll tell you this, the caveat with these layers is when you're not used to them, you're almost always going to be drawing on the wrong layer and you're gonna be like scratching your head like, why can't I erase this person's arm? It's because you're on the wrong layer. So always double check what layer you have selected right there. Okay, so I've got everything but that ball selected. I'm gonna take my eraser tool and I'm just gonna scribble loosely. I don't even have to be careful with this because my selection is keeping everything nice and safe. And then I can go up to the select menu and hit deselect or control D on the keyboard. And now I've got that nice little stripe across the middle. I can make a new layer. I've got that empty layer four right there. And I can just kind of um, make that little white circle in the middle. So let's select white. And we're just gonna boop. Oh, I'm on the eraser again, here we go. Okay, we're gonna boop right there. Now I don't have a reference image opened up and, and I don't wanna necessarily make an exact Pokeball anyway. Um, but I do want to show you one more really cool trick. If you made something like this white spot in the middle um, and then you decide you want the tune outline around it, there are some layer effects that we can do too uh, that help us out with that. And those are hidden over here. So next to where it says layer four, if I go out here into the light gray space and I just double click, it brings up this layer style menu. And I can do all kinds of really cool stuff, like a drop shadow. See that little shadow that appeared right there? And I can modify this, you know, make it darker, make it farther away. I can change the angle of it. I encourage you to play with this. Um, you know what, I will keep a drop shadow in there. Just a ever so light drop shadow, because why not? Drop shadows are cool. Don't let anybody at recess tell you otherwise. And then right up here, just above the middle, there's stroke, and stroke means outline. So it's gonna, it's gonna take an outline and place it along the outside pixels of whatever's on that layer. For us, it's just that white circle. I can make it a little bit bigger like that to kind of match the, uh, the stroke that we have on the big red ball. And we can choose to put it inside or outside the pixels. I'm gonna put it outside. And we can even change the opacity of it if we want to. I want it all the way dark. And the color, you know, whatever we want, we could do gray, I'm gonna do black, and I'm gonna hit okay. The neat thing about this is that it is also dynamic, just like everything else in, uh, that I showed you. If I start drawing more pixels on this layer, it will automatically add those same effects, the drop shadow and the stroke. So as I draw, it now has that drop shadow and stroke, which is super, super cool. Um, you can always fold those up right there or turn them off if you don't like them by hitting the little eyeball. And you can turn off entire layers too. I can turn off the whole red ball if I want. I just have a, a black eight ball. Layers are there for you to use. They're at your command and they're awesome. This is gonna be it for this tutorial. Take what you just learned, practice it for the next 45 minutes, and then take a break. Let it soak in, come back tomorrow for day two of Photoshop. See you there.